Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in, have a seat, have a seat. We have a jam-packed edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Thanks so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your support. Appreciate you listening. You have helped make this a number one iTunes Kids and Family podcast. We have a wonderful show today with two great guests. They're coming to us from Goliath Games and Pressman Toys. Brooke Schwartzman and Celia New telling us about all the great new games that you and your family can play this season. This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Jetly's totally interactive Magic Circus. Imagine a show where magic, illusions, comedy, music, and inspiration all come together as one. Imagine a show that has helped over one million young people and adults to change the way they approach life. A show that has shown people that being kind and respectful is fun. That show is Jetly's Totally Interactive Magic Circus, a transformative show that inspires young people to make healthy choices, be kind, and respectful. To find out more, please visit www.jetly.com. Or call 617-833-7063 today. Joining us right now from Plano in Texas. They are such great friends of the show. They're here to to share with us some great ideas for family game night. Please welcome back from uh, Goliath Games and Pressman Toys, Celia New and Brooke Schwartzman. Brooke, Celia, how are you? Great. We're so happy to be back, and we can't believe Back to School is already here uh, and want to show off some really cool ways to get back in that grind and uh, have family game night. There you go. Yes, yeah. The last time we talked, we talked about the power of play and how important play can be to help our kids learn and help them kind of develop that, develop that love of learning. You know, school can be such a grind sometimes, especially for kids who have attention challenges. And, um, you know, instead of just banging your head against the wall and banging your head against the wall, because that's illegal. You can't do that. Um, <laughs> it, it would be so much better to find a fun way to engage your kid and to you know, kind of help them experience the joy of learning. And, and family games are a great way to do that. So uh, you guys are the experts. So why don't you – and right now you can't see it at home, but Brooke and Celia have uh, assembled this beautiful collection of games that I'm looking at right now. So uh, why don't you guys just uh, show me what you have. Um, the games we have lined up are – the majority are from our Fall 28 collection. Uh-huh. And they range from different topics, including uh, STEM – such as for our Domino Junior, for our future engineers, or to Kids Know Best for trivia, and for word search for kids trying to get back into English, or especially for ESOL kids that are trying to just trying to attain more skills in the English language. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah, those are great. They're a great place to start, and I know we have more, but um, talk a little bit about that word search game. Now, you had we you shared with us a little bit um. Uh, about a uh, an earlier version of the game, and I, we, my family, I loved it. Talk about this new version. So for Word Search, this is our new design for uh, the 2018 year, and it's pretty cool. So essentially, the gameplay is where you get to search for different words in on the, I guess, uh, character pad, mm -hmm. and if you're the first one to see it, you have a little, little tokens that you put over the letter to claim as your own. And the first one to find it obviously gets claimed, and then if you can find the most words, then you win. And the great aspect to word search is that uh, if you go to our Goliath game site, you can make your own word search pad, so you can choose your own words and switch them out interchangeably. Yeah, and, so and, and this is a great game. I, my, my, I remember my, my daughter and I would spend hours and hours and hours together playing different word search games. We traveled a lot together, and... Oftentimes, if we were in a restaurant waiting for our meal or in a hotel and didn't want to watch whatever was on TV, we'd pull out that old school, you know, word search with the pen and the paper. Uh, but this is really cool. The design, it's kind of like a, a circular uh, kind of game board, and you can turn the board so that, um, you know, when it's your turn to play, you can turn so the letters line up with you. And 
instead of a pen and paper, you, you use little tokens to cover the letters. And it's, it's really cute and it's a really elegant design. I, I love it. And I love that, that idea of being able to go on your website and, and create your own um, grid of, of letters and, and words to search from. Absolutely. We already have, you know, 16 different themes from countries to food to things like that. But as a former educator myself, this is a really great tool to reinforce vocabulary words or if you're at a kid's birthday party, you want to put their names in there. Um, and so as, as Celia mentioned as well for ESL learning English language, but uh, really just a great way to, like I said, change up the gameplay. I love that everyone can play together at once. This game board is so unique that from every angle, it looks different. And the fact that you already have 16 themes and continue to add uh, is a really great tool for kids and families alike. Yeah, you know, you bring up an important point, that word vocabulary. And mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many battles that word vocabulary caused in our home when my son was <laughs> in middle school. And, sure. and he was such a bright kid, but, you know, get, you know, and I would say, well, get the flashcards out. No, I don't want to do flashcards. Well, then write it down. You're, no, I don't want to. Do, boy, oh, boy, if we had had this and would, you know, be able to just create a, a, a grid with his wordly wise words <laughs> and new vocabulary words, whether it was the English words or the foreign languages that he was learning. Yeah. Wow, that would have saved so much heartache. It would have been, <laughs> it really, it, it literally would have turned a nightmare into a fun experience for us. Absolutely. That's kind of the goal, like you said, you know, making learning fun and making it engaging. And this allows you to do that, which is, which is so incredible. Yeah. Going yeah. back to power of play, like, honestly, kids learn best when they don't know that they're actually learning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you can spell a word from different angles, then they know that word and they can definitely use it on that skill on like their spelling test or the upcoming school spelling bee or just using it in everyday vocab if they're not a non-English speaker. And yeah. so it has so many different aspects and uses beyond just trying to knock off the fuzziness from transitioning back to school. Yep, absolutely. Now, Celia, the first game that you kind of um, showed us was uh, had something to do with STEM, and I have a young person in my life right now who is uh, planning on being a doctor and an engineer. So this is certainly a game that I think um, would, would, you know, that that we want to play together. Tell us a little bit about Domino Junior. So Domino Junior, friends, is our dinosaur-themed Domino series, part of our original Domino. A rally series. Uh-huh. And essentially, it's pretty cool. Uh, like with any classical domino game, you set it up to where you want your obstacle to have like a full alignment and that all the dominoes fall in place. And it's so fun and cute because I don't know if you can see it clearly, but with the classical like dom- domino and dinosaur twist, you can stack the dominoes on the dinosaurs and it's just so fun because you can build it and play with it in any way that you can imagine and so you're not really limited to just like oh here's a design just follow it Uh uh-huh that's so important for students especially pursuing the stem route because they have to be imaginative they have to be inquisitive and they have to um pursue any aspects they can think of Mm -hmm. so with this it gives them that tool to do so but without them actually like forcing themselves to learn. It's just a fun free play item that they can use to really challenge those skills in the best way. Yeah, and and that's one of those domino games where you set up the dominoes and get them in a pattern and knock them down. And uh, that is so much fun, especially for the males out there. I, I mean, I even love doing that right now myself. Awesome, yeah. So we actually have a domino rally collection uh, that's been around in the Pressman line since the 80s from epic loops to really intense kind of obstacles, but we wanted to bring that experience to younger kids. So this is actually geared to ages four and up. And as you can see, the dominoes are a little bit thicker, um, which kind of lets little hands kind of engage and mm-hmm. building that from a young age. So that kind of, as, as Celia said, that sense of curiosity and building and seeing how obstacles work. But we actually do on our Pressman toy website, you can see our entire Domino Rally collection uh, that lets you continue to add to that experience and gets more complex uh, with different age groups. Excellent, yeah. excellent. All right, what's next? Oh, I love this one. Yes, kids 
No best. That's uh, you were saying it's a trivia game. Correct. It is a trivia game, the kids vs. grown ups trivia game. And unlike other trivia games, what's really unique about this is the questions are geared to both kids and adults. So, for example, the kids' questions might be asking about Harry Potter or the Lion King, or might ask the things they're learning in school, like inches to feet, versus the parents' questions that are more geared to their age group, whether it's the Beatles or significant historical events that took place in their lifetime. So it's really a wonderful way that both kids and parents can engage. As you can see in the back of our game board, you start and you move your way, and we call it the final exam. There's pop quizzes, but it's testing who knows best. It's a really, again, fun way to kind of have that parent, uh, you know, kid dynamic. Uh, and we just love that, again, it incorporates, it's interesting for everyone, it challenges everyone at a different level. Uh, and this is, again, another new item for fall. You know, I, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Celia. I love this idea, especially of combining the questions that are relevant for kids and the questions that are relevant for parents' experience. And I think that that is so I, – I think it's really fascinating. I think kids are really f- – even though they try to pretend they don't care about their parents or are interested <laughs> in them, I, I think kids are really kind of fascinated with their parents, especially with how their parents grew up and what was important to their parents when they grew up. So I think this would be a great way to kind of share knowledge and uh, get, get kids involved and, and interested in a little bit of history and, and also getting parents – giving kids a chance to explain to parents why they're interested in in, in different things. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of you hit the nail on the head there. And actually, if you guys go on YouTube, a uh, YouTube channel called That YouTube Family, actually we sent them the game. They played it. And it's fascinating because they have boys who are about eight to a teenage daughter. And it was really engaging gameplay. The video actually, I think, has like half a million views. Um, wow. But it was something, like you said, it, it lets everyone kind of participate uh, you know, kids are still engaged in what their parents say, and it's so rare to find, you know, you want to have that family interaction time, but you want something that is challenging and interactive for all ages, and I think this game masters that, uh, and it's just a great uh, addition to any family game night. Yeah. You, you know, it, it's funny uh, that that young person I was telling you about who wants to be a doctor and, a, and an engineer, um, she's seen my, my, my high school yearbook picture where I had long, curly, blonde, beautiful, I might add, blonde <laughs> hair down past my shoulders. And, and it, it always confused her. But but then her mom and my wife were going to see uh, a concert the other night with Journey and Tr- Cheap Trick and Def Leppard. And she saw the concert poster and she said, ah, that's why Uncle Jed had his hair like that in high school. Now I understand. <laughs> That's awesome. That's All right. So what else do we have here? Yeah. So we have uh, ITOP, which actually is hitting U.S. shelves now, but it's been really big actually in Europe. And it is a twist on a spinner. As you can see, there are lead lights that keep track of the score. Ooh. Um, this is a great after school activity. Another cool feature is you pop this in. It's great on the go. Um, and another really great idea is that there's actually 10 different games within it. So, for example, if you spin... Uh, 214, pick it up that moment, you'll get Cupid uh, animation going. If you spend 314, you'll get Pi, and there's a uh, compass mode and different challenges that kids can do. It's even addicting for adults alike. <laughs> uh, and it's just kind of testing your score and different challenges throughout. But yeah, this has been really great in Europe. It's kind of just a fun twist on a traditional spinning top but another cool activity to do on the go or at home. And there's so many aspects to it. You can teach, like, hand-eye coordination through this. You can teach different number games through it. And it's just a really fun tool to have for any kid, either by themselves or with their friends. And that absolutely is one of those games that a kid would be engaged with for hours and not realize that they're learning. I mean, it's a really, it's, you, you can't see it, but it's this really cool kind of top spinny thing with lights and LED indicators and um, yeah just really really clever and inventive thank you yeah I, I definitely wouldn't want to want to have my kid have that in his backpack at school because he could just yeah. spin that and it's really go. after school activity <laughs> <laughs> after school at home a reward incentive for doing your homework and studying but yeah. still like as Celia mentioned, a great way to manipulate, master. You're trying to do different challenges, and uh, yeah, just a fun thing to do. Yeah. Very cool. 
Now, I see, Celia, you have a couple of more trivia games. Yeah, um, this is going back to along the lines of Kids Know Best along our trivia line. And so um, in regard to our fall 2018 line, we have Pop Trivia and Totally Trivia. And these uh, games, they encompass over 900, about 900 different questions with a wide variety of topics. So for Pop Trivia, I think it covers like the last seven decades worth of pop culture and different music aspects that uh-huh. you can like test your friends or your kids over. And with Totally Trivia, this ranges in any, everywhere from science to math to English to different aspects of anything you think about. And then Quirky, it's pretty fun because even if you don't know the answer, you still you get to bluff and you want to try to convince your friends and your family, like, do I know the answer? Do you agree with me? And so these <laughs> games are just so fun in the fact that, one, you get to test out your knowledge, and two, it's just a great like bonding exercise, or even an icebreaker if you're like a teacher and it's your first day of school and you want to introduce students to each other. And so it just has such a fun play dynamic. So so get, let me get this right. Like the, the quirky game, uh, the, the trivia games I kind of get, that's kind of straightforward, and it's, I, I love them. But quirky, it sounds like uh, if you had someone with an imagination like, like me... <laughs> I could I could pick up a, a card and not know anything about it, but be able to say, uh, "Oh, this is uh, the Beatles. Yeah, they were famous for their um, for their study of bugs back in the fifties, and they, they're really good, and everybody loved them, and and they, they 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 became millionaires because of that." Absolutely, yeah. So you're basically bluffing, and you need to convince others that you are. You're answering against the clock, um, and so it's a great way to just kind of convince. And that's what's great is that. Kids age 10 to an adult, if you have that kind of wit and confidence, you can play the game as well and be on an even level playing field, which is another fun aspect of this game. Wow, that's <laughs> that really does <laughs> no, it really does. It sounds like a lot of fun and not only fun for a family game night, it it that just sounds fun for any kind of game night. I can see yeah, adults. I'll we'll send you a copy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, definitely could see adults uh, getting together and really having a blast with that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Awesome. And it's definitely really fun when someone else is like, wait, I know the actual answer, but then you have to convince your other friends that you are, you're actually lying about it, and uh-huh. it just goes into a fun debate. And just, just persuasion, yeah, the debate, the bantering. Yeah. So, so, so I could, I, I, so my goal is to convince you and, and then you guys either vote for, yeah, he's telling the truth, he's not, and, and if I trick you, then I, I get points. Is that how it works? Right. Essentially, yes. Oh, cool. So you're deciding the answers and you need to convince us. But if we call you out on your bluff, then, you know, you might lose this point. So it's, again, a really cool way just to test how well you can bluff and lie to your friends and how confident you are in that moment. You know, I was just listening to a, another podcast. Uh, and, yeah, there are other podcasts out there. Um, <laughs> and it's a pretty popular one called Freakonomics. And they had a similar game, but they had all these scientists and historians coming up, basically coming up on stage and telling us something you might not know. And the audience had to decide whether or not they were telling the truth. And wow, so cool. Something you can do at home. Definitely. And just with your friends, with students you don't even know in the classroom, it's just an all around dynamic game. And it's so fun just to have on hand. Yeah. And. I, I'm, I'm thinking what a great way for a teacher to kind of break the ice um, starting off the new school year. Just a way to kind of share some knowledge. Also a great way to get to know um, personalities. I mean, I could see this with um, at an after school program, uh, a church youth group. You know, just a great way to kind of bond and get together and have some fun. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have to ask you guys. You, you guys are kind of like the, the queens of, of play and fun. What's that like? How, how, how fun is your job getting to just play all the time? Well, it's like, surprisingly, it's a lot of work, but in the best of ways. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, going and touching down on um, our other game, Charades for Kids. Uh-huh. Like, uh, even though it's such a classical game, Charades, like, seeing how it's used in such different dynamics and different positioning. Like, with this one, you don't even have to read. There's just pictures of what you have to act out, like, such as for the chicken or for the bean. And then seeing how, like, kids just naturally pick up on it and then they play it, and it's just so intuitive to them. 
but you're giving them a medium, a tool to just act it out and like learn from it. And as well as for ESO, ESO kids like myself, uh-huh. this was definitely like a really handy tool just to become one familiar with English language and then two just becoming more comfortable with a whole new culture. And just a comment for me, I mean, I grew up playing games like Rummy Cube and Mastermind, and so it's really a dream job. These are the games, staples of our Pressman toy collection, and now I get to work for that company. Uh, you know, in my interview, I taught the president of the company how to play or pop the pig game. <laughs> the first day on the gig, I was playtesting a Frisbee. Um, you know, the past few months, I actually got to playtest. We have a new escape room game a MacGyver, based off the MacGyver series. And I got to play test the different uh, missions so I could give feedback for our website, what kind of hints would be helpful for different players. And so um, even though I'm on the marketing side, uh, I still get to kind of help with all aspects and, and give feedback on the boxes or how to play it and get to demo what it shows. And it's really a dream job. Last week, we just came back from Gen Con, which is the largest gaming convention in the world. Mm-hmm. And people travel from all over. And I got to play test games for four days straight. And it was just a dream. <laughs> just a dream. So, you know, as Celia mentioned, it's a lot of work like any job. But it's exciting. At the end of the day, we get to make people excited, make people happy, bring people together. Um, and in such a technology-driven world, it's really refreshing to see that games are still played um you know even with younger kids some of our games and watching them discover that aha moment of the pig popping mm-hmm. are you know being able to incorporate some skills in a fun way that kids don't realize that they're learning while they're playing um it's really just an incredible experience and so we, we're totally going to use that queen queen of play uh, queen of toys line around here All right. um, but it's just really a family feel and it's really great that we're all getting to play tests and get to be creative and, and learn, you know, just different games and always trying to grow and, and get feedback from our fans. Like, for example, our Mastermind game, which I mentioned, is mm-hmm. a classic. Um, but we realized that the storage was kind of difficult. We got a lot of customer service feedback. Unfortunately, we don't have a copy yet, but our new uh, version actually has a great storage unit under and a better feature to reveal the code. It's code maker versus code breaker. So we're always trying to create innovative products, really work with our customers. And like I said, we have 14 offices internationally. So it's really cool. Like we knew that ITAP, for example, was really popular in Europe. Um, but we noticed that certain colors, like the purple or blue, were doing better. So we only took the colors that were popular. So we're very fortunate, too, that we get to you know work internationally, but we understand international markets are different. Cool, uh, so, cool. Yeah, it's a, really, it's a really fun, cool industry to be part of. Yeah. And, to um, and overall to the young person that you know that wants to pursue the STEM route or just all your young viewers like with the toy industry and the industry that we're in um, power of play, games, etc it's such a great opportunity to challenge yourself to think about things in ways you would never have even fathom possible mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. because you know what charades for kids like charades is just a classical game but you want to add a twist to it you want to experiment with it and you want to make sure that's fun yep. and overall being the quote unquote queens of play it's <laughs> such a fun just career to even consider mm-hmm. and so I'm, I feel like Brooke I feel so lucky that we even had the opportunity to do so yeah. and just to kind of piggyback on that I know in our last conversation we mentioned our young inventor challenge but our ship of treasures game was actually created by two fifth graders um, and so they took that, and we constantly work with inventors, and we're open. So if some of the listeners out there, if you have ideas, let us know. Our, our friend or foe game was started by a group of moms who just went out one night and put this on Kickstarter, and that's how it got started. So that's kind of the beauty of it, too. And I know in, in elementary school, I got to create a board game as part of a class project. It gets you to think. So it just because you're not working technically in the game industry doesn't mean you can't come up with these ideas, and it's pretty amazing that we're working with these young kids who are coming with these really incredible games and yeah. uh, like I, we talked about I love that you and your daughter just played word search instead of just tuning into your phone it's so important to just disconnect and regardless of what you're playing to have that where you're actually interacting with people and having those social skills and thinking outside the box and having to formulate sentences all these things are building a much larger picture and it's you know I get technology is important, but it, it makes me sad because I feel like a lot of it's so much behind the screen and, and mm-hmm. games in general 
give us this opportunity to branch out to do something so different. And so, you know, we're excited. All, all games, even our fun games, have the educational aspects. We kind of pulled some uh, that really hone into the back of school theme. But ultimately, like, it's, it's people like you, Jed, who, you know, take that time and understand that bonding time and what that means for a family unit and encouraging even the young kids, like the one that you talked about wanting to be an engineer, to have that creativity mm -hmm. um, and explore because that's something that gets so lost and I feel like in our society in general. Yeah. And, and one thing I just want to touch on really quickly is I love that uh, charades for kids game because one of the things that, that, that um, was pointed out to me and, and I, I was working on a, a, a book and I goes, I want to create this book to really inspire for, for kids to read to their parents, to really inspire the parents to read more. And um, this, this friend of mine who's a principal of an inner city school, she said, you know, a lot of my parents can't read. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and they need to understand that the time they spend in the kitchen with their kids is, is valuable and important, the time they spend playing catch with their kids. And to have a game where a parent who can't read for whatever reason, maybe they're, they're, they don't speak English, maybe they never had an opportunity to go to school and they came here to build a better life for their family, to have a game like that that they can play with their kids and to still have that fun and interaction and that bonding time with their kids, so important. What a wonderful gift that 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 you guys have created for families oh, thank, you. thank you that means a lot you we couldn't have said that better and um that's amazing to be able to bridge that so much is nonverbal. and i actually uh taught at inner city school for three years and uh, most of my parents did not speak english is mm -hmm. you know that was their, and the kids would translate during it but to be able to have something like this where pictures and be able to interact is so great because they still do want to be involved and like you said a lot, not just if a lot of our students uh, came from Mexico, but wherever they come from, if they're coming to America, they want a better life. They still want to be able to interact. I think a lot of times there's this stigma that you know, inner city parents don't care. My, my parents care and they want to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a great way to like let them be part of that, that narrative and, and participate in their own way. Um, so that was, that was a really good point and beautiful. Yeah. Well, and we hope that it allows people to connect in other ways. Definitely. Well, and beyond the overall novelty of each game it's not just a game or a toy it's a tool for parents and kids to ultimately just come together and learn different yeah, aspects of the language barrier yeah. yep. absolutely well the um, website it's, is it pressmangames.com uh, it's pressmantoy.com or goliathgames.us so oh. um, either way just the Goliath the Games or Pressman Toy you can find us there follow us on social media and uh, we have a lot of selection. We're available on all major retailers from Target, Walmart, Amazon uh, to other retailers as well. So, yeah, that's a little bit about our collection. Awesome. Yeah, we're available via Facebook chat. So if you have any questions whatsoever, just shoot us a message. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Well, as always, we've had a blast hanging out with the queens of fun. Brooke Schwartzman, <laughs> Celia New from Goliath Games and Pressman Toys. Thanks very much, Queens. We had a great time talking to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jen. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be coming to us from Liverpool and England. He is the author of The Key to Survival. His name is Daniel Warlock. He's going to be a great guest. We had so much fun speaking to him. I know you're going to have a great time. Hey, we want to thank Brooke Schwartzman and Celia New for being with us today. And we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids and playing family games with your kids and cooking with your kids and loving your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.